Hello everyone, and welcome to Developer View. In this video, I'll be talking about the single feature that has really just created the Assassin's Creed series, which is the parkour system, and uh, really how they did it, what are the principles behind it. So, let's get climbing. First of all, um, if you notice the parkour system, you may think that it's like a free type of... Um, like free form, I can go anywhere type of thing. But in actuality, the system's very restrictive. And for a good reason, because if we didn't have these restrictions, we wouldn't be able to enjoy this system uh, as much as we do in Assassin's Creed. Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, simply, actually, right here. Notice that when you're on this thing, you can really go only two directions, left and right. You can choose to go this way by pressing W once and then going in that direction, but if you were just running forward, there is a very linear path, and that's because of constraints. In a system like this, constraints are extremely important. Uh, for like, w well, when you're on top of this thing, you'll you might not have a constraint, but when you are on a smaller surface or when you're restricted to just one zone, like he is right now, there is directionality. But as soon as he chooses the direction he jumps exactly in that direction. So really, in something like this, there's only four ways to go. Uh, whether it be the four cardinal directions, or the directions of just how the grid was laid out within the engine. Um, so you have these directions. But I can't choose to go into a diagonal direction. Notice? Where if I choose to go this way and I decide to jump off, yeah, afterwards there might be some correction. But first, he jumps off this way, and then in the air, corrects for this way. So it gives the illusion that there's freedom, but really, there's four big constraints. And for a system like this, that can reduce a lot of problems. Uh, the second one, or really the other thing that I need to talk about, is the use of physics with... What was that? Okay. Use of physics with animation. Uh which can be seen throughout this entire series. So first I'll give you this example. Notice how when he's walking, uh, and I'll try to zoom in, pay attention to his body. Notice that while he's walking, you have the simple walking animation, but you have all these other objects moving on him. You have his gun and his holster that's bobbing around. You have the... Uh, um, the, the sheath on his back for like staffs and whatnot that's also moving with physics the clothing on his left shoulder is moving with physics uh, some things that are close to the body like those ropes on his right arm are not uh, and of course the cape areas around his legs are and that's important because a lot of the animation driven by the engine that they constructed is animation combined with physics you can also see this uh, with the general animations uh, when he's walking and he's moving left and right. Notice how his head is kind of flicking back and forth and his arms, like, they, they kind of overcompensate when they're going, let's say when he's taking a right step and then he goes left. It overcompensates a little because that's what we do. That's totally natural. Um, and the same thing with the, uh, with the feet. You'll see, like, when he's trying to step, he's kind of like stepping over each other's feet, is because they have in place a little overcompensation that's driven by the physics of the engine. Now, with Unreal, you can do something similar to this using what's called the skeletal IK system. This was prevalent in Unreal Engine 3 and got pushed to Unreal Engine 4 also, uh, but it's uh, essentially allowing the engine to take control of the skeleton of a. Uh, uh, the, the skeleton of your character um, and to do different things. So, uh, for example, the aim offset. I don't have any actual uh, bullets right now, so that's good for this. Notice how he can aim absolutely upwards and downwards. Uh, and that's not because they made an animation for all of these movements. It's because the, fi the, the physics of the engine is driving the arm towards the center or the location of that crosshair. So that's what enables him to look upwards, and they're also probably driving the head in a, some lesser degree. Um, 
Oh, and the body. Notice how the body is turning. Uh, but that's probably because after it reaches a certain threshold, it's better to have the body just turn like this. Anyways, um, so I wanted to mention that before I got into the actual... Uh, before I got into the climbing skeletal IK, because it's important to, to know that. Where this is kind of like a simple example of skeletal IK, and the climbing feature is perhaps a, a little bit more dynamic of an example. So, look here how he is grabbing onto this surface. That is actually also using that skill, that same skeletal IK system that you saw with the aiming. However, the, what they're doing here is they're applying a little bit of edge detection, so that's why he's able to grab onto every single edge that populates this whole world. Um, figuring out the normals of that edge, and for those that are new, a normal is the uh, is the tangent of the surface that it's connected to. So for this wall, the normal would be pointing that way. And for this upper surface, the normal will be pointing straight up for the normal of the uh, where the pipes are sitting on. And so what they're doing is essentially placing the hand at the corner of those two normals where they're different. Um, and that's an edge. And that's how it detects an edge. Um, and so because all of these areas are also considered normals, um, you're able to see that. Now, notice when he... well... <laughs> hold on. There we go. Um, when he places his hand here, notice that the hands... the hand placement is just slightly different, and that's because of this little offset. They have these... this calculation down very finely, um, and so that's what enables them to actually look here. Now, uh, if you, we go to this curved surface, you can see this in a more, def uh, more, uh, like more dramatically. Actually, notice how his left hand and his right hand are at two different levels, and the same with actually his foot placement. They're really finding the normals of those of that surface and placing the foot just. Uh, really just tangent to it, so it looks like it's touching. Um, and that's what enables him to place his foot. Oh, actually, this is perfect. Notice how his right foot is a little bit lower than his left foot. And actually, his right foot is kind of bending at some weird, unnatural angle. And that kind of d really demonstrates the effect of skeletal IK on this animation. Where the foot is, they probably have it on a strength of, like, maybe 90-something percent. When it gets to the calves, they have it down to like 60%. The thighs, <coughs> excuse me, the thighs, they have it down to like maybe 20 And when it gets to the torso, it's not affected at all. Um, but all of this <laughs> is how they make the climbing in the game look realistic. Um, so every surface along here uh, can actually be calculated. Now with Unreal, it will be a little bit harder, and you may have to actually play with the C++ code. Uh, I don't think getting it so fine to where you can grab every nook and cranny uh, can be done with the blueprints. Uh, however, with C++, I'm sure it's possible. The other thing that you could do, which <laughs> you can see in the game Gears of War, uh, is you can actually place areas... Uh, and this is, I, I guess, slightly lesser, where it's not really using edge detection, where you can place a invisible object, let's say right here, uh, where when he goes towards that object, uh, kind of like how they have this cover system. It does a little bit of edge detection uh, for where cover is, but there's a not a very... Um, not a lot of areas where you can actually... Uh, do cover. But anyways, what I was saying is uh, essentially place these nodes that when you are approaching them or when you sense them, uh, it allows you to grab onto them. And so that's another way that people have been able to tackle this problem. It does require a lot for your level designer though, um, because they would have to go in and place that everywhere through all these different areas instead of just checking for corners. Um, so the better area is probably just to check for corners. But it's, uh, 
yeah, the way that they have this parkour system is very elegant. There's a lot to do. Um, so that's kind of like the general principles behind the parkour system. There is one other thing that they did which I really like, which is the going down method. Um, and that I may have to actually talk about in the next video. Uh, because, well, the parkour system is the single biggest thing about this game. Um, so, oh, one thing I also wanted to mention is the limits of, like, him being able to jump. Notice how over here, uh, if I climb to this part here, and then I jump off, he's able to reach over there. And that's actually due to a, uh... Uh, certain set thresholds where this character's, I guess the uh, uh, the code behind the character checks for when you're doing the running. Uh, so what I think happens is when he jumps here, there's an area of effect where there's a kind of a close zone, a farther zone, and a much farther zone, and that's kind of like the limit to where he can jump. That farther zone also depends on, it's like a cone that goes from where his feet is going downwards, where he can eventually hit that area through the jump. So this would be like the farther extents of that zone, uh, because otherwise he would be able to just jump on top of the thing. But I think through that, through that detection, it can detect where the, uh, where the nearest zone is and where the nearest corner is. And it precisely cr makes the character jump to that. Now, that is really good, especially for when you're doing like parkour like this. But some of the jumps can seem a bit unnatural. Uh, like, why did he need to jump from over here to exactly this corner instead of just in this general area? Well, partially is because it's checking for an edge. And that's an edge. Um, and he landed on his feet, so... But, uh, yeah, so some of the, uh, uh, actually, let me see if I can get to an area to demonstrate this next area. Uh, yeah, some of the jumps, like, if you're running alongside like this, uh, doesn't seem very natural. It seems kind of like he's flying. So I think they could have actually set the thresholds just slightly lower than what they did, but, uh... Yeah, that's how they did this aspect of things. See, like right there, that that one was a bit unnatural, how he jumped all the way to that edge. Uh, so really carefully fine-tuning of where he can, of where the character can go. Uh, if you make it too small, it seems that the person can't really climb at all, because some things just seem limited. If it's too far, then it just seems unrealistic, and the person's just flying everywhere. Um... So a careful balance between that will get you hey, to what you, what you want. Anyways, that's all for this here. Um, in the next video, we'll be discussing more about the parkour system, especially the climb down feature. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. Like, oh wow, like and subscribe, and uh, feel free to share this with anyone that you know who, you know, wants to develop a cool game. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video.